We want to again thank you for being on the call today with Monica Rebella, CPA and President of Rebella Accountancy, which is a CPA firm that specializes in accounting, tax, and consulting services for hundreds of dentists in California. The topic of our call today is how to calculate profit and overhead, and how does that compare to your peers in this environment. If you are not a current client of Rebella Accountancy or you have not met her, Monica Rebella is a CPA and has 26 years of accounting and tax expertise, which includes 13 years working with the big four, big eight firms, and over 13 years experience working with dental practices. She is a past president of the Orange County Long Beach chapter of the California Society of CPAs and is a member of the AICPA. She has conducted training sessions for accounting firms as well as lectured on tax and business matters to the California Society of CPAs, UCLA Dental School, and the Orange County Dental Academy. She runs her own firm in Tustin, California, providing accounting, tax, and consulting services for over 300 businesses throughout California, specializing in dental offices and small businesses. Monica, welcome to the call. Well, thank you, Jeff, and thank you to everyone that might be on the call this evening. Uh, thank you for giving up time this evening to, to listen to this, but I, I know this is a really important concept for all my clients, and so it's something that we do on a pretty regular basis every year. But I put a twist to this this year. So I'm doing how to calculate your true profit and overhead, and how does that compare to your peers. This time, I'm going to actually take you through how to figure out what really the overhead and profit of your practice is. And the reason that I'm doing this is that I spend a great deal of time every month working with buyers who are looking to buy dental practices. And one of the things we always have to work with regarding the selling dentist is we need to know what's not going to reoccur as expenses for the buying dentist. Um, in other words, there may be some expenses that will not continue once the buyer has the practice. And we're going to go through what that means and how to do it. So there's a little um, calculation here that I think you all need to be aware of to really understand it. These are things that might be coming home to you when you sell or retire, and it would add to your home budget. So this is the other thing I work with if my clients are getting ready to retire. What has your business been paying for that's now going to come home and be part of your home budget? So let's go to slide number two. Um, what I'm giving you here is kind of a middle-of-the-road dental practice. You know, I've got 200 clients that are dentists and they range all over the place with collections and expenses. But I'm giving you here is just a middle-of-the-road dental practice. And by the way, this is a GP practice, okay? So I'm not getting into anodontics or oral surgery here or periodontics or pedodontics. This is a GP practice. But, you know, we can follow these things along for the specialty, and I'll comment on those as we go. So here we've got a GP practice. And we're pretending it was last year, 2013. Collections were $700,000. We can see that at the very bottom here, we've got net profit of $179,000, okay? So what this is saying, I've got these numbers on the slide here. His profit is 25%. His overhead is 75%. This is huge. That's a huge amount of overhead for a GP practice, okay? Uh, that's a lot. Now, when we look at these expenses here, and I've cherry-picked the ones I see most often. There can be other expenses here, but here, here's the typical dental practice. You've got wages. You've got lab expense, dental expense, office expense. You've got your meals and entertainment, your auto. There's insurance going through. You've got education, travel, promotion, telephone, utilities, and rent. Okay, I've captured kind of the bigger expenses, and you can still see this is a large overhead, and the profit's pretty small at 25%. Okay? And when I'm talking wages, I'm not counting the doctor. This is the staff. Okay? The doctor wages are not in here. This is the staff wages. Okay? Let's go to number three, Jeff. So in slide number three, what we have here are what are called Dr. X income addbacks. These are the items that if you sold – or if we're trying to calculate true profit, which is what our accomplishment is here, is we're trying to calculate real overhead, real profit. These are the types of things we need to add back to the net profit. So this is additional profit, really, for the doctor. 
We've got wages of the wife and wages of the kids. We've got $40,000 in wages to family members. Okay, that, that's not the staff. Okay, we do have some family members in there. We've got some office supplies of Costco that we're going to say we got to add back to figure out true overhead. They've got the meals and the auto. They've got family insurance, disability, and life for the doctor that need to be added back. It's not part. These are not things that are part of the true office overhead. The CE, the travel, the promotion, the telephone, and the utilities. These are not really expenses of the overhead of the practice. These are some additional expenses, but we're trying to drive at it. So you can see here, we've got $115,000 of expenses that are actually clouding where this practice really stands. And this is some of the things I go through with my client is really trying to figure out what is their overhead. Are they really making the right amount of money? Are their percentages really making sense to the practice to really see how well they're doing? Okay, let's go to slide four. Slide number four is the revised profit and loss. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the original profit and loss, the 700000 in collections for Dr. X with profit of 179 I'm adding back all these expenses that are really clouding what the true profit of the practice is. That's another $115,000 to our revised profit and loss. This, for Dr. X, this example practice, this new revised profit and loss, is the true overhead and profit of this practice. The true overhead of this profit, it practice is 58% with profit of 42%. And you're saying, okay, but is that good? Is that good? Is that better? Well, we know that overhead was 75% and profit was 25% to begin with. So obviously this is a much better picture. It's a much better and healthier practice than when we saw it before. Okay, the doctor is actually getting almost $300,000 from this practice. That is a pretty good return. Is it optimal? No, it's not the optimal. The optimal and best practices for a GP practice would be 55% overhead. Okay, so we're off by 3%, but not bad, not bad at all. So you can see that easily when we track some of these expenses, that may be expenses of the business. I'm not saying that these all might not be some expenses of the business other than the disability and the life insurance. Those cannot be deducted. Those would always be adjustments. But, you know, your, ed, your travel and your education and your telephone and some of these and promotion, I'm not saying that those might not be related, but we want to really get to the bones here. What's the real overhead of the practice? So let's go to number five. So slide five, we're looking now at how does this relate to what my key percentages are? What should I be looking at? Where is my, are the items I should be looking at? So we've got in a red box here key percentages. These are the ones you want to keep your eye on, not only the top number and the profit number, but your key percentages here. So we've got wages, lab, dental supplies, and office supplies. These are the four areas where you can do something about it that really makes a difference to your practice based upon what you're doing as gross collections. So in this case, we've got wages for Dr. X. Even after adjusting for the items that are kind of clouding our overhead, we've got 30%, 33% in wages. We've got 8% in lab, got 8% in supplies, and 1% in office expenses. That's where he currently stands. Those are the ones to take a look at. They're not optimal. This is not where the doctor should be. There's even more money that should be coming to the doctor if they are really looking at and looking at their staff, looking at their supplies, and managing the overhead of their practice. The other is, again, we looked at the overhead. 58% overhead is pretty good. It's really only off by about 3% of optimal. So he's still doing well but could do better. So let's go to slide number six. Slide number six gives us best practices. Okay, so we know Dr. X, and we know now what his revised overhead is and his revised profit. We know where his key percentages are. Now we want to compare him to best practices. So we can see here that if he was looking at best practices, wages should be more at 25 than 33. There's 8%. 
we can see that lab and dental should be six, and, and actually I'm seeing a lot of people that are in the fives, okay? So you can get that down even more. Office supplies are where it, it could be, okay? So we know that we have 6% that we could do, I'm sorry, we've got 8% that we could trim in wages if we could really concentrate on changing wages, and we've got 2% in both dental supplies and lab expense that we could trim down and provide more to the doctor. Well, what does this turn into to dollars? So if this really was to happen, what more could we put in the doctor's pocket? So let's go to slide seven. So here's slide seven. You can see if we trimmed that amount, that 8% in wages, it's $60,000 more in the doctor's pocket for a year. If we trim the 2% in dental supplies and lab, it's 14,000 each. The doctor could put $88,000 more in his pocket. So not only would it be 294, it'd be 294 and 88. I mean that's phenomenal. And if we're trimming eight, we're trimming 12%. If we could do that, he would be a superstar in overhead, a superstar beyond a superstar. So there is more money in our practices than we think if we look at and trim what's maybe fogging up our overhead, and we keep our eye on the key percentages, the key areas that we want to look at. Now, I'm not saying that we can get to these all the time. It has a lot to do with the practice, the geography of where the practice is. It has to do with what you feel that you want to compensate your employees with, including you know, your bonus arrangement. But if the top number is the right number, these percentages make more sense, okay? 33% in wages, if you do the calculations yourself and you want to do it for a full year, don't do it month by month. Make it crazy. It doesn't make sense because your income goes up and down every month. You want to do it for a full year. But 33% in wages is really, really high, doctors, really, really high. Um, I've seen some at 31 and that's high. If you hit the 30% mark, you've got a lot being paid to your staff. So it says a few things. One is, are scheduling right? Are you paying people right? But usually it's the scheduling. Is there too many heads or is the scheduling wrong? Are there schedules being filled or they got a bunch of holes and you've got people that are spending too much time in the office? So a lot of time it has to do with getting the right staff and the scheduling of the staff. The dental supplies and the lab expense, like I said, these are things you can trim, especially dental supplies. If you're working with your, your supply vendors, you tell them that if you want it to be 4 to 5% of monthly income, and they'll get it there. They don't want to lose your account. And you tell them if they can't do it, you're going to find someone that will. So it's definitely something you can get them to work on. Your labs, honestly, they want to keep your business too. Um, and if a lot of them went out of business. They don't want to lose more clients. So I can tell you, you can actually work on these things. As much as you say, oh, you know, it's only a couple percent, look at the dollars. These are dollars that are coming out of your pocket. So, um, you know, we got to look at that. But I'm just now looking and saying our math is not right on this, Jeff. <laughs> so this slide's not quite right on this savings, so I apologize. Um, I guess I've got to double check the math before I send these slides out, but our, our, our math is not quite right here on, on the savings, so I do apologize. But you get the concept here. You get the fact that there's more savings in the doctor's pocket. So we kind of went over just an example profit and loss. We went over an average practice. We went over, gee, look at some of these things that are going through the office that really cloud their true overhead of the practice. And again, if you're looking to retire, you need to get your handle on auto, your insurance, your cell phone, um, you know, some of these expenses that are going to come home to you. A lot of people don't realize how much the business is really paying for them that now will become their own expenses. And it's important that we get to know this. So I'm bringing this up again for two reasons. One, we want to get to really what your overhead is. Two, I have a lot of doctors that are in that transition period of five years thinking of retiring, and this is important to know because it is what the buyers look at. It's what the buyers need to know 
to figure out what's the true profit coming to them. Will that be enough to pay the debt on the loan that they're going to take to buy your practice? And will it give them a living? So it's important for many functions. One, how well is your practice doing? Two, what is it really benefiting you? And three, what is it going to be when you retire that you might have to start really thinking about what your needs are to get ready for retirement? So, you know, all of these are really important items. But, you know, unless there's people on that have questions, it's going to kind of be a, a short webinar this time because I really wanted to hone in on these particular items and not go too far abroad with them. Certainly I have best practice percentages for other areas of the profit and loss, but I wanted to focus in on the ones that directly are related to production. Wages, lab expense, dental expense, and supplies in the office. Those relate to your production. When your production goes up, we're expecting those to go up. When your production goes down, we expect those to go down. And I can tell you over the last 10 years, even with the economy going down, it hasn't always followed that pattern. I find people getting stuck with their people and not changing schedules, and I find them getting stuck with how they're ordering in their lab, and a lot of money has been left that's not going to the doctor. And it has a lot to do with understanding your practice. I know as you get moving on in your practice and you're making a good living, you have a tendency not to worry about this too much because you're happy with what you have, but I have a lot of doctors that still need to keep their eye on this thing. Um, so unless we have some questions, Jeff, I'm kind of done other than our next slide, which is slide eight. Um, if you're currently not a Rebella Accountancy client and you would like to have a reality check on your practice, I'd be happy to do it. For my existing clients, if you have more questions about this, it's going to be something I'm going to be doing when I do my reviews for my clients this year is to really wake up and get a reality check here of really what the profit and loss is, what our real profit is of the practice. Um, but if you would like more or have more questions or would like a reality check, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. You can reach me by telephone at 714-619-0667 or my email is mrebella at rebella cpa.com. So, any questions on the line, Jeff? Monica, let me check. Uh, the phone lines are open. If you do have a question, just go ahead and say something. We do have several people on the webcast, and it takes a few seconds if they have a question for that to come through. If Again, if you're listening on the webcast, um, in the bottom left-hand corner, there is a submit your question button. You can just type that in there. I don't think it requires a name or an email address, but then you just click the submit button after you've typed it in, and that will come through, and we can read that. And I can give them a few more seconds in terms of catching that. And I don't hear anybody on the phone lines. And Monica, just to stall a little bit to see if a question comes through, you, you mentioned that in terms of the, the profits, um, giving them a better picture of their practice, that uh, it's a consideration when they sell the practice? Is it because it's a uh, the sale price tends to be a multiple of the profit? Well, there's various different ways that you value a dental practice, but um, one's a percentage of three, average, three years average gross collections. Um, the other is you've got to look at the bottom line. So you've got to look at the bottom line to figure out true profit, and then there's a multiple based upon where the, in geographic portions the practice is. Is it L.A. County, Orange County, Inland Empire, San Diego? Is it out of state? Is it Oregon, Northern California? Where by geography that practice is located will determine the, the multiplier on true profit. That looking towards three years average ghost collections will become very close and will then get you what your sales price should be. So you have to do both of those calculations, but first you've got to come up with that real true profit. The banks want to get to the real true profit to figure out if they're going to loan to the buyer to buy your practice. They will absolutely require it. Gotcha. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm checking on the Internet. It looks like uh, no questions coming through on the webcast, and I don't hear any on the um, telephone. So, um, again, um, thanks for covering this information. It's very, very interesting. And like you said, if somebody has a 
question about that, you're more than welcome to give them a uh, Pinel Rebella reality check. Where you, I would imagine they'd have to give you um, their numbers, and you could go through it with a fine tooth comb, that type of thing. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Well, great. Monica, thanks again for being on the call. If you're listening on the webcast, again, if you have a question, just feel free to call Monica at the office, 714-619-0667. This has been the Q&A webinar series for dentists hosted by Monica Rabella, CPA. Today's webinar was titled How to Calculate Profit and Overhead and How Does That Compare to Your Peers in This Environment. Monica, thanks again for being on the call, and we hope to talk to you soon. Thanks so much. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.